So we've moved out to the range. We're going to take a look at the ballistics demonstration now, comparing handgun and rifle. All right, we're going to start off, take a look at the handgun first. What we're using is probably arguably one of the best home defense, self-defense rounds that, that uh, really was ever produced. Not something that's available in the exact configuration anymore, but we're using 147 grain Winchester Black Talons. Obviously changed the bullet up a little bit, took the coating off of it, still available through Winchester, just called something different now. So. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot this now. We have six half gallon jugs of water. What we have simulated in the wall there, exactly the same construction as you would have in your home. Two pieces of wall board between two by four framing. Let's take a look at what we get energy wise. Okay, let's take a closer look at the water jugs. Again, remember water is non-compressible. So even though it's not ballistic gelatin, it is. it does give us a decent ability to see what kind of energy is transferred. So I relined the jugs back up in the exact order they were placed, jugs one through six. I want you to take a look where the round struck on the side. The first three jugs had enough energy to basically split open or tear the face away of the actual jugs themselves. So that water not compressing, as the round passed through, is pushing the energy out. As we move to the third jug, you begin to see just a small tear. As it exits the third jug, it's just a, a small, about the diameter of a bullet, not much in a split. By the time we hit, I'm sorry, it's a fourth. By the time we hit the fifth jug, just basically two holes, the sixth, exact same thing, traveling through in the same plane. If we move these down and take a look at the back side of the wall, we're gonna come on in close here, you can see, exit on the, the second piece of wallboard here, not a great amount of energy being transferred not a large amount of expansion happening already. Again, that wall board will often plug that, that hollow cavity up and it slows the expansion of the bullet, slows the way the designs, the bullet's designed to function. Not uncommon through media like wall board, not uncommon through heavy clothing. Uh, a lot of things can get into that because of the speed of the bullet, can get into that, that process of expansion, slow it down and greatly reduces the effectiveness of the round, but also increases your amount of penetration that you're gonna get. Okay, now we're gonna move into the rifle portion of the ballistics demonstration. Still the same setup, still six half gallon jugs of water, still have that same wall board set up. Switching over now, we're gonna be using the Novesky Mark 18 AAC suppressor. Gonna be shooting a 55 grain Federal Premium soft point. Comes out of their, their law enforcement tactical line. Uh, gonna see how that does against the wall board. We're gonna look for much, much greater transfer of energy. So when we take this shot, a greater transfer of energy and see where we have. Remember that nine millimeter, that 147 grain nine millimeter penetrated all six jugs and through the target after going through the wall board. Let's see how the rifle does. Okay, as we can see, uh, we have much greater transfer of energy. If you remember back to the pistol, that just opened up one seam. This is number one, it split it in half, opened it up, flower petal. Transfer all that energy. Number two, you can see it also broke that apart. You can start to see now penetration or over penetration in that rifle round. Much faster velocity, much higher energy. It's transferring that energy. Imagine if this were someone uh, that you were looking to stop, a threat you were looking to stop. You're dumping that energy into that threat, not letting it continue into additional areas and penetrate further. You can see by jug three, we split some seams, but we're starting to really, really lose. If we look at jug, jug four, we're into four. We're just down to some pin pricks. We have five here, we're here, and six. If we open six up, we dump the water out. It 
Six, contain, six contains the actual round itself, okay? So, stopped in jug six, started to see a, a tremendous decrease by the time we hit four and five. We had the round stop in six. I'll tell you this from doing this demonstration a lot of times, we'll typically see that round stop in jug five, even sometimes depending on, on what type of ammunition we're shooting, even sometimes in jug four. Every once in a while, jug six, we had some real good expansion this round. The soft point round is, is actually one of the better ones to perform some of that penetration function. In law enforcement or in, in tactical, we would have the round like this because it penetrates auto glass and some mild barrier a little bit better. You move to something with like a polymer ballistic tip, you're gonna generally recover that bullet or pieces of that bullet inside jug four, sometimes jug five. This one made it all the way to jug six, okay? But it stopped there. So we're already seeing a significant decrease in the penetration over a nine millimeter. Now, if you talk to most folks and say, hey, which is gonna penetrate more? The obvious answer seems like the rifle because of the velocities. But again, it transfers that energy so much better in the beginning portion. If you come in tight here and zoom in and see, and you take a look at the wall, and as we clear the jugs, you have a, a chance to see here, you look again back to the pistol round, we see the difference in energy that's transferred in the rifle. We can really start to see just pulverizing, dumping a ton of energy. Hate to use that word stopping power. I think it's overused and I think it's ridiculous. But energy transfer you can clearly see here and that's what we're looking to show. Rifle versus handgun. Okay, now we're getting ready to move into a portion of the ballistic demonstration where we talk about the capabilities in handgun and rifle with body armor. This is a level 2A uh, soft body armor. There's no armor plates in this. We're gonna go ahead and shoot it a couple times and show you the capabilities of the armor and also of the ammunition and the energy that, that a handgun and a rifle can deliver. So let's check out handgun first. This is gonna be one shot onto the soft body armor utilizing a nine millimeter. All right, so we just took our shot on the body armor using a standard nine, nine millimeter round, 115 grain. Obviously center mass hit. One of the things that's important to understand about body armor hits is it's designed to disperse or, or, or relieve the pressure of the incoming round. Kinetic energy imparted is something that people talk about a lot, but they don't ever really understand what that means. As you can see, when we take this down, we have no penetration of the body armor with the round, even on a full metal jacketed round. A few things are important. As the round impacts, it starts to disperse and open the, uh, the Kevlar weave, placing all the rest of the, the energy outside of the impact area. Now, just because the bullet stopped doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't impact our, our uh, target. The target has some spall penetration behind it. Obviously, this would cause some breaking of bones, uh, severe bruising, could cause some lethal hits depending on how many times you're hit. Those are some things to think about. Okay, we've seen the nine millimeter now. The 2A vest completely stopped that, had no penetration. Let's see how the 5.56 does against the body armor. Okay, so as you can see, we're gonna get ready to see as the camera pans around, we had full penetration, not only of the front panel, but also of the back panel. Two hits on that, both of them fully penetrate front and back panels. That'd be a bad day. Okay, so we just saw the rifle. Chris is getting ready. We're gonna shoot the pistol again, just to show you there's no trickery with the body armor. And this is older body armor, probably 15 years old. Still maintains its rating. It's a 2A, so it's designed to stop those nine millimeter rounds we're firing. Not designed to stop the 5.56 that Chris just shot. We're gonna shoot the vest again with a nine millimeter. We should be able to go ahead, even after three hits on that, that vest, it should go ahead and stop that round again. So let's take a look. Nine millimeter on it now. All right, so as you can see with the multiple hits to the body armor at 15 years of age, it still has some good ballistics coefficients. It still retains that round. Uh, it still disperses the energy. Even with that second round that hit lower abdomen, you see that there's no penetration of the ballistics armor other than what was there previously from the rifle rounds. On the front side, this is the entrance. You can feel it still obviously maintains Again, Kevlar is designed to weave and 
and buffer the expansion of the round and, and create some dissemination of that energy transfer. Again, still very painful, however, life-saving. Okay, we're moving into the next portion of the ballistic demonstration. We're gonna be shooting some rounds into some common construction materials that you may find in your home. We've already done the wall board and the two by four. We're gonna move in now to cinder block and some paving block, a little bit more dense stone. Simulate some of your concrete facade, some of your stone facade. Take a look at what the, the pistol caliber ballistics and also what rifle caliber ballistics are capable of as far as penetration and how quickly that what you believe to be cover can erode. So we're gonna fire one shot each on the cinder blocks first. Okay, so you take a look. Here we have the rifle on the left, handgun on the right, and you see we recovered the handgun round inside the cinder block. Both of them had very similar penetration. Um, neither of them completely passed through with that first single shot. So a one-shot demonstration doesn't really show us that much. Where you're really going to begin to see the difference in energy is as we begin to fire multiple shots, how quickly the rifle can break down this cover compared to a handgun. So penetration, again, you see very, very similar. If you look inside here, we recovered the 40 or the uh, nine millimeter round from inside the cavity. And if you look inside the cinder block here, if you can zoom in, you may be able to see some pieces of copper jacket. The round broke apart and small pieces of jacket are still inside the cavity as we brush them out. So it completely broke the round apart. All right, we're gonna go back and fire some multiple shots. Now with the rifle. All right, so we just got done with the ballistic demonstration, showing again how handgun and rifle ballistics compare to one another, and that they really are a valid home defense firearm. And with modern ammunition, good ammunition selection, you really have an effective package for all the reasons we discussed prior to this, and showing it ballistically as well. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, you know, people have some misconceptions about what bullets do or what their capabilities are, and I think we did a good job today at showing what that capability is. Uh, you know, kind of putting to bed some of the myths that have been out there in the media, mainstream media, uh, taking a look at the actual uh, quantitative effects. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks a lot for checking us out. Let's get out here, man. Ben, go pick all the targets up. Go. Back.